Hi, so welcome to another reading vlog. I haven't been doing much reading the last couple of weeks because my new job was kind of just getting going and it's been a bit of a time, but I think I'm kind of starting to get my head around what's going on at work and what I need to do. And also like every second week, I don't have to go into the office probably. So this upcoming week should be less stressful than last week and like less commute time, which is the main thing that gets in the way. So reading wise, I was really hoping to be able to continue The Stone Sky because I've read the first few chapters and I'm really loving it. However, I realized that this book that I'm reading for my secret library project is due back in a couple of days and I've renewed it so many times that I can't renew it again because that's how long that project is taking me. So I need to read that. But like it's super short so it shouldn't be too hard to get through. The other one that is due back is this beautiful copy of Deck of Omens. This is one that should be a pretty quick read. So I'm going to try and read maybe both of these two in the weekend. Although Jason's about to come around, we're going to go out and enjoy the sunny day. And then tonight is election night. So we'll be watching all the results and seeing what's going to happen with that. I think we should be safe for things to kind of stay the way they are but you can never predict an election so I guess we'll see what happens and there's also a lot of questions about which of the smaller parties might get in and what influence they'll have which I think is is the interesting part so actually I don't know how much time I'll have for reading this weekend but we'll see how it works out I do also have some audiobooks so the two audiobooks I'm going to focus on this week firstly I've got The Silver Mask by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare it's the fourth book in the Magisterium series I think there's five books so I I'm getting close to the end. I actually, I started listening to it and I had to go back and read a synopsis for the last book because I'd forgotten what happened and the main character is in a not very nice situation at the start of this book. And also, I forgot that a character died in the last book. And so when he was talking about this character being dead, I was like, are they? Um... <laughs> So that's not very good. But once I read the synopsis, I remembered everything and now I'm back into it. I'm enjoying it. It's kind of about this boy who ended up going to magic school, even though he didn't want to go to magic school because he'd been raised to believe that mages were evil and bad. Then he discovered a lot about himself and the world. And since then, it's been doing really interesting things, I think, with the kind of like the evil one and the chosen one tropes. So I am enjoying it. I like the chaos magic and I like the friendship group although you can definitely see that there's a lot of similarities with Harry Potter in that regard but regardless I want to finish that this week as well I have The Toll by Neil Shusterman which is the third book in the Scythe series um I've heard mixed opinions about it which is why I'm interested to read it I really hated the first book in the series the second one was better so maybe the third one will be better even better for me anyway I'll tell you more about that one when I start reading it which hopefully will definitely be this week So it's now after work on Tuesday and I have to admit that I failed to complete my library books on time. I just didn't get any reading done over the weekend, just a tiny bit. But what I did do is I found the ebook of my secret library project on Libby and so I've downloaded that and I also found the audiobook of Deck of Omens so I was able to return both those books even though I'm kind of sad because I was really enjoying reading that physical book for the secret library project but I'm not allowed to talk about that in this video because it's saved for that other video that I'll put out at some point maybe. What I'm going to do now is go back to focusing on reading The Stone Sky for my physical book. I don't know if I've talked about this much in the last couple of vlogs but kind of like a world where apocalypses are happening all the time, uh, there's earthquakes all the time, it's a really horrible place and because of that society is very different. We also have these people who have these earth magic powers and those people are treated very badly. Honestly there's so much going on in this and this is the third book in the trilogy so it's hard to talk about but 
I'm really loving it and I'm excited to get back to it and maybe I'll even manage to make some progress on it. I would say for the writing style it's not a very fast read but this third book so far is very intense so I'm going to enjoy it. Also just to go back to my library book failures you might think good now you've returned those books you won't have so much pressure to read these library books right? Wrong! I picked up three new library holds from the library that were waiting for me. So firstly I've got to read The Woodward Wall by Deborah A. Baker but it's actually Sean and Maguire. It's like a story within a story from Middle Game. I love Middle Game so I was excited to read this. If you've read Middle Game you've probably heard about this and you're probably excited for it unless you're one of those people who didn't like Middle Game. Middle Game being a story all about twins and alchemy and cool stuff. Uh, I also have Mallory by Josh Mellerman. So this is the sequel to Bird Box which was this spooky horror where people start kind of going crazy and whenever they see something and so uh, the survivors are going around with face coverings to cover up their eyes and like locking themselves away inside. When I got to the end of Bird Box I really wanted to know what happened next and so hopefully this book will tell me that. And then lastly I got The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turden which is some kind of like Sherlock Holmes style murder mystery with demons. It's really thick though. Um, it also has this cool map in the front. So Stuart Turden's other book The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Cardcastle also has a map in the front but it's like more Cluedo based and I guess this one's kind of the same but it's a library book so once again I can't see it properly. Also it really reminds me of this board game that used to be at my Nana's house and like it was a big ship and it was kind of like Cluedo on a boat except that as the turns went on in the game you you would slowly turn the ship so that it went under the water? I wonder what happened to that game. I wonder what it was called. Anyway I loved it when I was a kid so when I saw the map in the front of this um, that link made me more excited even though of course it's nothing like that game but it's funny how links to certain things make you excited for them right? Also at the library I stopped by the free bin and there weren't many things in there but what there was is this comic book called Ruse. It says it's the Victorian Guide to Murder and also it says he's the world's greatest detective. She's even better. So I don't know I mean maybe it'll be trash but it was free so I grabbed it. Also <laughs> a lot of things have happened actually. I felt like I didn't do any reading and so there was no point doing an update. Turns out there is. So I just finished just before this the audiobook of The Silver Mask by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. It's really hard to talk about because again it's the fourth book in a series but I really like the direction that the series has gone in. Like the first couple of books I wasn't that sure but the third one started to get interesting and this fourth one is really doing some interesting things with the magic system. The main character is being put in this really difficult position where he has to make some really difficult decisions and as soon as I finished listening to the audiobook I borrowed the last book in the series because I am super excited to get to it soon. Um, I basically on my wall at the moment up there all those blue post-it notes don't look too closely because all my secrets are on those post-it notes but those blue post-it notes are like a queue of all the audiobooks that I need to read and all the physical books but the physical books are less time pressured is that what I'm trying to say? Like for most of the physical books now that I've returned those ones to the library I can take my time although I still wanted to read them this month there's only 10 days left in the month does that seem likely? Probably not um, and then I guess in November I'll worry about these three books which will have time pressures on them but I'm not worrying about those until November. I don't know I feel like I'm making reading into a stressful thing lately but um, I am still enjoying it. I am. I just feel like I'm a stressful person at the moment because I miss not working. My job's not even that bad compared to some people's but just tiring isn't it? Anyway. I'm supposed to be editing up my September wrap up which is like 20 days late and for some reason I decided to try editing it in Adobe Premiere which I don't normally use and I have to look up how to do everything in it so it's taking me a long time. So that was a terrible decision but I'm gonna go and finish that and I will check in with you guys when I've read some more.
Okay, so it's Sunday, which means I've been a lot worse at updating this vlog than I meant to. But regardless, I did also realize that I forgot to update you guys on what happened at the election. So, Labour won, which is Jacinda Ardern's party, which is obviously what most people wanted because her party actually got enough to govern alone, which is not really how our political system normally works. And maybe not entirely ideal, but better than some of the parties that obviously most people don't agree with being in any kind of powerful position. So, a good outcome overall. Also, what that means is one of the promises that Labour put forward for the election was that they would give us a new public holiday. Now, maybe not as important as some of their other promises, but it's cool because it's going to be around the time of year where we don't have a lot of public holidays and people need more time to rest. Also, it's going to be based on essentially the Maori New Year, which is cool for us to have like a public holiday based on our native people. At the moment we really only have like Waitangi Day, which is the day the like Treaty of Waitangi was signed, which is not really a celebration of Maori culture. So this new public holiday, Matariki, is kind of cool. Also it led me to finally look up the myth of Matariki and I really like it. So the Maori creation myth is this idea that Ranganui the sky father and Papatuanuku the earth mother used to live like lying together on all their children had to live in darkness between them but then the god of the forest Tane Mahuta decided to push them apart uh, and then the Matariki part of the myth is that the wind god got so mad about this that he pulled his eyes out of his head and threw them across the sky and that's what those stars are. I don't know why but I really like the idea of getting so mad that you pull your eyes out and throw them away. Yeah I don't know why I like that so much. So basically these are like seven or nine stars that kind of appear around July and the Maoris used to use them to kind of give an indication of what the upcoming planting season would be like. So that's cool. Also, let's update you on my reading. So I finally finished another book for my secret library project but I can't tell you about it which is sad because it was actually a really amazing reading experience but it has made me more excited to hurry up and get that video together. I just need to read one more book for it. As well I finished listening to the audiobook of So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Oluo. I think I said that right without even looking it up hopefully. Um, and actually this is the book about race that I have enjoyed the most. I think I got the most out of it. I didn't necessarily agree with everything in it but it was written in a way where it got me thinking about things which is what I really want from a book like that. I think it had a lot of good stuff in there about privilege and about how to deal with people getting defensive about conversations of race and really explaining quite well why black people or non-white people might make things about race. Um, also I think even though some of it was fairly American centric I think a lot of the arguments were relevant outside of America which is something that sometimes frustrates me about these kind of books even though like it's fine they're targeting Americans. Anyway I did really like it. What I also found out is the author was born in the same year as me which makes me wonder if for those kind of books I should be looking for authors that are about my age because maybe they'll write things in ways that feel more relevant to me but at the same time maybe I should purposely look for people outside of that age range to make sure I'm not like only learning from my own generation. I don't know but it was interesting to think about that. Um, As well what else? I started listening to the audiobook of The Toll which is the third book in the Scythe series and like it's got some cool ideas in it. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's introduced more characters. Every book it introduces more characters and I think it's really interesting the way all the different plot threads are mixing together and one of my main complaints from the first book in the series Scythe it has I think explained that and there were hints in Thunderhead that it was gonna do that but I just it still makes me a little bit annoyed the way it was set up and I still don't like Scythe because the whole plot was pointless but Thunderhead was better and the toll I'm about 75% through and it's okay. What I still think is that all the ideas that he brings in with the world building most of them he doesn't explore them enough for it to really have any meaning or he explores them in a way that is completely logically flawed and doesn't make sense. So that's frustrating. <laughs> um, one thing that really annoyed me and maybe he'll talk more about it in the book but there's a part where there's like a throwaway line hinting at the idea that it's normal for people to want to kill other people. Like if you have these urges to kill people that's fine because like this really good character is like has been a scythe and has been killing people and they say something along the lines of oh I do kind of miss it. And I just don't see how you can 
throw in the idea that people just want to kill people in a YA novel and not address that more fully. Like, please don't teach young people that wanting to kill people is normal. Please don't teach them that. That's not good. And there are just a few other things where it hints at things and I'm like, no, no. Um, there's this weird idea of race where they've like gotten rid of the concept of race, but there's like some like people have like these cultural coefficients of the different races. And it's just so flawed because it's making race into like this purely genetic thing, which is not what race is at all. And you're like just throwing away people's cultures and that's barely even addressed. It's because this world is framed as a utopian society it's almost saying that this is a utopian way to address race which is a hundred percent incorrect and so I hate that um and there's also a part where there's this character who was raised in a part of the world where they don't choose a gender until they're like 16 or 18 or something and we're following this character who is female when the clouds are out and male when the sun is shining or the other way around I forget and I just I don't know it explored that a little bit but I struggle with that idea of gender but I ex I struggle with the idea of gender generally because I think it's a broken concept and we should throw it away and I really think that if people had been raised until they were 18 to live without gender that there in most cases would be no reason for them to have an agenda like if you feel different depending on whether the sun is shining you still feel like a version of you if you've never had gender why would you want one and like for the most part if it wasn't for pronouns we wouldn't even need gender we could easily throw it away i don't know these are just my thoughts on gender and i guess it's probably not fair to judge this book on the fact that my thoughts don't align with that book when my thoughts maybe don't align with a lot of people's thoughts but still it just felt really weird and out of place to explore that concept so fully yet not explore some of the concepts that seemed more aligned with the book's themes. Anyway this book's not terrible but like the last one it frustrates me because it has a lot of cool ideas and then it either ruins them or doesn't explore them properly. Anyway I've just looked at the time and oh my god I've been talking forever so this is probably a really long clip. One last thing I wanted to address was right at the end of the last montage footage I showed that I went to a book sale and here are all the books I bought. So I bought eight books. They're all a dollar each. So that's super good. Although I gave them the full ten dollars because it is a charity book sale. And I didn't think they had any change actually because I was listening to their conversation while I picked out the books. So I think I'm going to save this for a separate haul video. But I'll give you a spoiler. All of these thick ones at the bottom of this pile are books from the Wheel of Time series. And I haven't read the Wheel of Time series. And I don't know whether I'll read it in physical form or audiobook form. I don't know if I'll like it and I'll want all of these because these are all books from the later half of the series. It's like a 13 book series. I think this one is book 13. So I basically got 7, 8, 10, 11, no 7, 8, 11, 12 and 13 and they're not exactly the same editions but they are the same size. I thought about not buying them but they were a dollar each and I do want to read that series at some point and the later books are written by Brandon Sanderson and I do really love Brandon Sanderson so... And I got some other cool books too. And cheap. And supporting charity. It's all good. Anyway, I'm going to try and finish off the toll today and maybe make some more progress on this, but no promises for this one probably. Tomorrow is a public holiday. So I'm kind of taking today as a relaxing day and then tomorrow I can get my shit together. Uh, and tomorrow maybe I'll finish. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll work it out. So I just finished the toll and honestly, the whole time that I was listening to like that last quarter of it, I was looking for my keys. I know that this morning I used them to go and get my makeup bag out of the car and then I came back in and I did some makeup. Where did I put my keys after I did that? Where did I put them? I don't know. I've spent hours looking for them. I stripped everything off the bed. I took everything off the sofas. I moved the sofas. I've honestly looked everywhere. I looked in the fridge even because I... When something's lost I usually follow the strategy where you just systematically look everywhere no matter how unlikely it is that it will be in that spot you just look everywhere systematically until you find it. And normally that works but I have spent three four hours looking for my keys and I still don't know where they are. I've given up. I found my spare keys for my car and my spare keys for my house. There's some other keys. 
that I don't have spares for, but those are the main ones I need, I guess. I honestly, I don't know. I know they're in the house somewhere. So at some point I'm going to find them. It's going to be really stupid and I'm going to be really mad. So if I'm honest, that did somewhat distract me during my final reading of the toll. But still, I don't think it changed my opinion of the toll too much. Basically, it's fine. I still think there's a lot of flaws in the world. I think that Neil Shusterman isn't that great at writing relationships, but he tries to put a lot of relationships in his books. Or at least I didn't like the relationships. Um, I also think that what happened at the end, I've read other books that explored that topic in much more depth. And I just feel like maybe I just read too much adult fantasy, even though I don't read that much. But this is YA dystopian, so it's much more targeted towards people who haven't read a lot of these ideas. Whereas I've read a lot of these science fiction ideas and I've thought a lot about living forever and the future of humanity. So these ideas aren't new to me and I want more exploration of them. Also, I think I forgot to say, like, at the end of the second book, Thunderhead, Things were set up, I thought, for there to be a massive gap in time between the second and third books. I was expecting hundreds of years to go past and it only skipped forward three years. And I think that really missed the opportunity for the effects of the things that happened in the second book to be really extreme. In the end, not that much had changed between the second and third book. I also just think like some of the things that we discover along the way it still doesn't make sense that there wouldn't be some humans that had been calling these things out all along. Like you can't tell me humans just became completely stupid because there was some kind of AI helping to guide their life. Maybe some of us would but not everybody right? Anyway overall it was fine. I definitely don't love that series as much as a lot of other people do, but I don't think it's a terrible read. I think I need to put together a list of books that I think address the ideas in that series better than that series does, because there definitely are some. Anyway, I do think I'm going to end this vlog here. I will have to carry the stone sky over into another vlog. Honestly, I swear I'll finish it someday hopefully. But anyway, thank you for hanging out with me this week and a bit. Do let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about in this vlog because I would love to talk with you more about them down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.